Good morning and welcome back to Tactics Board. Today we're previewing Norwich City's meeting with Millwall at Carrow Road, their third championship game of the season, their fourth competitive match of the season, of course, and they haven't lost a single game, including pre-season, since the defeat to Blackpool on the last day of last term. So they're hoping to keep that unbeaten streak going. I'm going to take a look at how I think the match is going to pan out, as well as David Wagner's starting lineup for the game. So without further ado, I'll show you the team that I think he's going to pick and then we'll discuss it. So I've gone for Angus Gunn in goal, Jack Stacey at right back, Shane Duffy and Ben Gibson at centre back, Demetrius Yunulis at left back, Kenny McLean and Gabriel Sara in midfield with Christian Fasnacht on the right, Jonathan Rowe on the left and Ashley Barnes slightly behind Josh Sargent up front. And I think overall this 11 is the team realistically we've been working towards since Christian Fasnacht was signed. I think looking at the way the pre-season panned out, it was quite clear quite early on actually that it would be Barnes and Sargent in the front two, Sarah and McLean in midfield. And from there, the team sort of picks itself um, I will obviously discuss these players in detail, but I think it's worth noting that this would be the first game, if I'm correct, that Norwich would field the eleven that looks quite steadily their first choice eleven. And I know there are different circumstances around that, but that's probably one of the most exciting things going into the game um, is that although Ono Hernandez' injury um, is unfortunate, it takes that decision away from Wagner. Um, if if he's unavailable, which looks fairly likely at this juncture and means he has to pick the team that I think most Norwich fans expect to, to re represent the club throughout the season, really. And of course, things may change, players may go off the boil and transfers are still uh, a very active thing for Norwich, especially outgoings at this stage of the window. But as we sit here now, for me, and I think most Norwich fans would agree, this does look like the best eleven. So it will be interesting to see how they get on. It's a very different test, um, obviously, against Millwall, who you'd expect to be more physical, more in your face. But I think that suits Norwich a little bit more, actually, because they are actually very good at playing through the press now. And although under Dean Smith and Daniel Farker a little bit, they struggled when they were really put under pressure by other teams. That's almost what they're inviting. Um, and midway th through pre-season, I thought it was just sort of Shane Duffy and Ben Gibson being slow on the ball or reticent to pass it forward. But I think with each game, the evidence grows that they're actually trying to invite that pressure and then play through it. They did that really, really well against Southampton. And then because they left Ashley Barnes and Josh Sargent up front, it meant once they broke that first line, they could easily go and attack the Southampton team. And I think if Millwall do come onto them and harry them and harass them as they did um, on both occasions last season, that actually could really work in Norwich's favour. It's obviously a team that Norwich beat twice um, last season. They've not done too much transfer business. Obviously, um, George Long has signed for Norwich, but that's not going to affect things very much tactically. Um, I still would expect Millwall to be up there, at least in the top half of the Championship, and to present a very competitive team. So it probably will be up there with the most difficult tasks Norwich face in the coming weeks. Their fixture list does ease off a little bit um, in the next few weeks, but I would expect this to be on a par with Southampton in terms of the challenge they're presented with and maybe the technicality or the technical ability of of these players won't quite be up there, but they have got the championship now, so the physicality, the experience that maybe Southampton lacked and the game management that Southampton lacked in allowing Norwich to score four goals at their home stadium. So it will definitely be an interesting one to follow. And I'm going to take you through that 11 quickly um, and discuss why I've picked who I've picked. And obviously starting in goal, it's very, very easy. Although Long has come in, Angus Gunn has been Norwich City's first choice keeper for over a year now, really, um, barring some some small intervals where Tim Krul came back into the team. But he's now signed for Luton Town. It's just Long and um, sort of Vicente Reyes as well as uh, John McCracken providing competition. But I think the gap there is quite significant. And although Norwich will almost certainly have saved themselves um, a lot of money in terms of wages by pretty much swapping Krul for Long in that squad, I think the gap 
and the challenge to gun is much, much less uh, than it was before. And um, that will be an interesting one to follow, but Gunn has been consistently good. Was Norwich's arguably their best player last season, even though he didn't even get in the, the top three for the fan vote. And I don't see him being ousted anytime soon. And the same is true of Jack Stacey. David Wagner talked up Kellen Fisher's performance against QPR in the Carabao Cup on Wednesday. But um, I think Stacey has been one of Norwich's outstanding players so far this season. Obviously out jumped and Wagner felt there was a push, but I, th I think defensively there are a couple of problems against Southampton that he faced. But overall, he has been been very, very good and I would be surprised if he's dropped even in the coming weeks, to be honest. At centre-back is where I really felt I had a decision to make. And I think if Andrew Bamadele had taken his chance against QPR, then maybe he would have come in for Gibson or Duffy, especially given the mistakes that he's made. That QPR game was actually the first one where Duffy wasn't culpable for a goal and um, I think it is an interesting one to follow but the fact is probably none of them have really performed as well as they could. I would say Ben Gibson, I know he's not an especially popular figure amongst Norwich fans but has probably been their top performer in central defence so far this season in the Championship and Duffy was solid against QPR, Omba Madele still looks like he needs some some game time to get back up to speed and with the transfer speculation swirling around him it doesn't really feel like the ideal time to bring him back into the team he still needs to improve on that consistency and I don't see him um, starting in this game Dimitris Yunulis I see starting at left back again similarly to Fischer Wagner talked up Shemislav Poheta's performance against QPR but I still don't think he's really near Yunulis's level He's one of Norwich's best players technically and he suits this Wagner system perfect, perfectly tactically. So I'd be very su surprised if he's dropped and the same is true of Kenny McLean and Gabriel Sara, who are so vital to that Norwich midfield. Wagner, even when playing his second string team at Loftus Road, played each of them for a half and I thought McLean was actually excellent. Sara probably lacked the, the link with players that he's enjoyed with Sargent and Barnes at front, especially Sargent. I think he links with really, really well but there was a couple of times when he was looking for a pass and Adam Eder didn't make the run and he looked quite frustrated. Um, and I think he'll enjoy being back in a team with Sargent and Barnes this weekend. But arguably Norwich's best player, probably <laughs> maybe even undoubtedly Norwich's best player. And uh, I think he'll start when fit this season if Norwich can keep hold of him. And I don't want to create any doom, but he probably is that that saleable asset that's still left at the club. They've got a couple of weeks now to just hold out. And I think uh, given he's happy at the club, it looks like they may well be able to. And that would be a vital um, a vital player to keep for Norwich. If they are going to make this assault on promotion, which Wagner is hoping they do, and which looks increasingly likely with every performance we see. On the right, I've gone for Fasnacht because Hernandez's injury does look... Like it could be slightly serious, a bit of a complex issue with the hand is what we're led to believe at this stage. I'm recording on, on Thursday afternoon, um, but it doesn't look likely that he'll make the game on Sunday. And even if he, if he does, I'm not sure he's really been up to it. While the rest of the teams looked really fit, I think he's just looked slightly off the pace and, and a bit lacking in match fitness, which is a surprise for somebody who thrives in that sort of scenario and enjoys that physicality and likes to get fans off their seat. But I don't think he's really been up to it so far this season and I'd be very surprised if he isn't dropped. Fastnacht, by con by contrast, has, has really impressed where he's been given the opportunity. I think he's the sort of player that you're not going to see constantly involved in the game. He's only He only really comes to life in the final third, but he's a clever player, works hard defensively and makes good runs to create space for fullbacks, which is fantastic news when it comes to Stacey, who is obviously a very good crosser of, of the ball and a very good attacking asset for Norwich on the left it's got to be Johnny Rowe the man that everyone's talking about scored in every game that he's played so far this season and they'll hope that he can carry on that run against Millwall absolutely undroppable at the moment and it's almost not worth discussing same is true with Ashley Barnes and Josh Sargent obviously there was a tiny bit of a decision to be made when Adam Eder poked home that winner against Hull but I think the way that these two have performed has justified their selection. Josh Sargent just looks so much more mature in that number nine role. When you think about how he was when he arrived at the club, admittedly it was in the Premier League, but he did look a lot more lost. And at this level, his hold-up play is much better. I feel like technically he's getting better and he's tidying up those touches that maybe haven't been quite where they need to be 
um, in prior years and he looks like a man that really could score a number of goals for Norwich this season. Barnes isn't really that type, he's a little bit more creative, which I don't think is a word many people associate with him, but he also brings that that sort of nasty vibe that he's known for and that Norwich probably need. I think everybody recognised going into the season and probably for the last five years that that's the sort of thing that, that Norwich need and I think he can add a lot and I'd be very surprised if he gets dropped again. Right, thanks very much for joining me. We'll have plenty more stuff across our channels. You can go to pinkin.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe to Pinkin Plus, where we'll have plenty of exclusive stuff for only 2 99 a month. I think that's after a 1 99 per month um, introductory offer as well. So go and get your hands on that while you can. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, yeah, keep it locked for what will be a very crucial match this weekend for Norwich. <laughs>